Hey guys, my name is Rob Moir, and welcome back to my video series on how to record gameplay and Let's Plays. This is part two, so if you haven't watched part one, I'll put a link down in the description and you should go watch that first. Also, there'll be a little box over here, right here on the screen, that you can click. So, presumably you have the tech you need to start recording. So how do you actually do it? I'm going to make it really easy and I'm going to break it down console by console. This way it should be easy to follow and you can just jump right to which one you need. I'm also going to cover alternative recording methods on these consoles, so if there's a different way of doing it, maybe without a capture card, I'll put that in too and I'll give my thoughts on it. So here's what I'll be showing how to record off of. A computer. The Xbox One. A PlayStation 4. The Wii and Wii U your phone or tablet, a PlayStation 3, and retro consoles. First off though, I'm gonna go through the software I'm using. As I previously mentioned, I am using an Elgato HD60 for my recording. This is the Elgato interface. Here it shows you that you have a device plugged in. Here it lets you select your mic, choose your audio levels, adjust all the settings, choose a name for your recording, etc. Up here in the settings, you can select the console you're recording off of and also adjust the quality settings. If you have trouble recording or the finished product comes out kind of choppy, lower these settings and find the best meeting point for you, your computer, and your console. It'll vary depending on what you're using. Down here in the main window, you click on this little button here to record the game. You click on this over here to add in your mic and commentary. Here you can mess around with the overlays that include like your webcam, etc. It saves everything afterwards into separate files. That's your gameplay, the webcam, the game audio, and your mic audio, as well as having the option to have one full file of everything. This is really useful if you edit your videos. Okay, so now that we're done explaining all that, let's get to the actual recording. Number one, recording off of your own computer. So recording off of the same computer that you're playing the game on is actually really easy, and you can actually record everything without even having a capture card. I'll get into that in a minute, but first, here's how you do it with the Elgato. So first off, run an HDMI cable from your computer to the Elgato, and plug it into the Elgato where it says Input. Now, plug in the USB cable from the capture card to the computer, if needed. Next, go up to your display settings. You basically need to duplicate your display. Here, my computer already knows that it has the Elgato plugged in and has a setting specifically for it. If that's not the case, just click on Mirror Display. Again, all computers are a little bit different. It also depends, are you using a Mac? Are you using Linux? Are you using Windows? So it might take a bit of messing around to figure it out. After that, you're going to see this crazy screen on your Elgato, you hit record, and you're pretty much good to go. To record off of another computer, run the HDMI cable from the computer you want to record off of into the input of your capture card. Then, plug the USB of the capture card into the computer you're recording onto. Then, it should show up, you hit record, simple, easy, done. If you have any issues, just adjust the resolutions and displays. Elgato also has a guide on how to do all this on their website. Now, to record off of the same computer that you're playing on without a capture card, you just need a screen recording program. There's a lot of options out there, most of them are free. If you're on a Mac, you can even do it using QuickTime Player. This will record your screen, either a part of it or the whole thing, so you can easily record a game you're playing. You also will need to set up to record the audio of the game and your mic and all that other stuff. And it can actually be kind of frustrating to do, like the Elgato or most other capture softwares kind of handle all of this for you, but if you have to do it yourself, it can be a little annoying. Although if you don't have a capture card and you still want to record games, this is a good option. Number two, the Xbox One. It's actually really easy to record off of this one. I think the Xbox One is actually the easiest console I've ever come across to record off of. Plug the HDMI cable running from your console into your Elgato's input. Then, plug another HDMI cable from the output of the Elgato and run it to your TV. Plug the Elgato in with the USB, fiddle around with the settings, and then you're pretty much done. You can even play the game watching the screen on your laptop instead of your TV, because it'll run it without any delay or lag. Recording off of the new consoles is 
pretty easy these days. Alternatively, the Xbox One has a built-in recording feature, which you can activate by saying, Xbox record that. This will let you record up to five minutes of gameplay, and can even retroactively record things that happened less than five minutes ago. If you know what you're doing, you can also glitch it out and make it record for up to 10 minutes. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Xbox Snap an App. Xbox Unsnap. When you're done, you return to the app and it'll say a random amount of time has been recorded, usually like four or nine seconds. However, when it's done processing, in your files under On This Xbox, you will see the full thing there. Although, if you're recording over five minutes, be sure to end the video before the full 10 minutes are up. Otherwise, it'll often cut off the last 30 seconds to a minute of your video when it processes. Don't know why, it's just a thing that happens. I should also mention that it only records in 720p, and actually getting the video file for yourself is a bit of a pain. Anyways, it does work though. Number 3. The PlayStation 4. For the PS4, use the exact same steps as I showed for the Xbox One, although first, you need to go into your settings and de-enable the encryption of your HDMI signal. If doing this gives you any issues, as it says it might, you can also record on the Elgato using the same method that I'm going to demonstrate with the PS3 later in this video. Still though, I've never heard of it actually causing any issues. Like the Xbox One, the PS4 also has a built-in recording feature. As far as I can tell though, this one just retroactively records your gameplay and it can do it for up to about 15 minutes. Basically, you just hit the share button on your controller and you get taken to a menu with all the clips that it's been recording since you started playing. You're just as limited as on Xbox as to where you can share them and actually getting the file is gonna be just as big of a hassle. But again, it does work. Just like the Xbox One, it only records in 720p. Number four, the Wii and Wii U. I don't personally own a Wii U, so I can't show you a detailed step-by-step, -step, but I have recorded off of one, and it worked the exact same way as when I recorded off of the Xbox One or the PS4. Plug the cable in one end, plug another cable in the other end, plug in the card, and there you go. It should also be lag-free, although I didn't mention this before, that can depend on your computer's performance. So The Wii U doesn't have any in-console recording ability that I know of. Maybe they'll add one later, knowing Nintendo, probably not. To record off of the regular Wii, follow the same instructions as for recording off of retro consoles. This will be later in the video at number 7. Number 5. Your phone. Hello? Recording off of your phone is also pretty easy. You just need a piece of tech like this. My phone is an iPhone 6 Plus, but basically anything from the big brands like Samsung or Apple or whatever, from around the time of like the iPhone 4, it'll all have a piece of tech like this for it. Basically, this is just designed to let you plug your phone into your TV with an HDMI cable and watch what's on your phone on your TV. All you have to do is just plug this into your capture card like you would a normal console, and it should show up with pretty much no lag. This exact same method works for iPads and other tablets, you just need the correct piece for them. One thing I will say that's annoying with these devices though, is getting that little cable to stay in really well while you're moving around the phone. If it comes loose, it's gonna interrupt your recording, so keep that in mind. Number six, the PS3. Now we're getting into the older consoles, which are a little bit harder to record off of. Back in these days, nobody really thought of people recording off of them, so it was never really planned for. Your PS3 has an encrypted HDMI, which is like the PS4 I already covered, but there's no easy way to really get around it. You'll need an additional piece of tech, which I covered in the first video, called an HDMI splitter, and you have to make sure it has one input and two outputs. Also, only specific brands of splitters actually work for some reason. I'll include a link in my description to the video that taught me this method, 
in his description, he keeps track of all the splitters that are known to work. So if you're gonna buy one and you're not sure, you can reference this list. Plug your PS3's HDMI cable into the input of the splitter. Now plug one HDMI cable into your TV and plug the other cable into your Elgato's input. Under settings in the software, select PS4. Your PS3 is also probably gonna have a tough time running 1080p, so putting it on 720p and lowering the quality settings might be a good idea. It will record fine, but there will be some lag on your computer from the Elgato processing the footage. So it's not playable directly off of your computer like say the PS4 or the Xbox One. This is why you need a second HDMI cable running to your TV so that you can play off of your TV without lag. Otherwise, it pretty much becomes kind of an unplayable mess. Number seven, retro consoles. This is a really wide list, which covers pretty much everything from like the GameCube to the N64, to the Super Nintendo, to the original Wii, to the Sega, and everything in between. This will work for pretty much any game system that uses an RCA plug type instead of HDMI. RCA are these little things here. Most TVs nowadays don't even have plugs for these. So basically what you need is an RCA to HDMI converter. All you do is you plug the RCA cable into your console, and then you plug the other end into this converter, and then you plug an HDMI cable in. Now what you want to do is you want to run this HDMI cable to the HDMI splitter, similar to what you did with the PS3. You run one cable to your TV, the other to your capture card, Plug in your capture card, and it should be working. The hardest part of this method is actually figuring out if you plugged in everything correctly. There's a lot of cables, and especially the old consoles, some don't even have three RCA plugs, so it can be a little bit confusing. It's also tough to know if it's not working because you have something plugged wrong, a loose connection, or because it's an old console that just doesn't want to work right now. Just like with the PS3, there's probably gonna be a bit of lag on the computer, but the direct line to your TV solves this issue. So that's it. This video might end up being a little bit long, but I really just wanted to cover all the ways I know of, of recording off of these consoles. If I missed anything or got anything wrong, let me know, leave it in the comments. This is the most scripted video I've ever done, so I'm sure I might have accidentally said something wrong without thinking, who knows, just let me know if I did and I'll, I'll put an annotation or correct it. And just as a side note, the current generation of consoles like the Wii U, Xbox One, and PS4 are constantly getting updated. And these updates can have an effect on how you record, including the recording directly off the console, like using the PS4 share option or the Xbox One Snap and App. So the methods I've shown may differ in like a year or two. If so, if I know about it, I'll try and leave some info on that in the description. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for part two. After watching these two videos, you should know pretty much how to record off of any console you come across. The only thing I didn't cover was like the handhelds, like DS and all that, because I just, I don't have a setup to do that. I know how to, but I don't personally have it, so it would have been kind of hard to show. The next part is going to be specifically geared at filming a Let's Play and how you do that. So if that's something you guys are looking to do, definitely check that video out. When it's out, I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, guys. Like I said, if I missed anything or got anything wrong, if you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, guys, uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, Rob Noir here, also known as this guy, or this guy, but not this guy. Making another one of these videos to let you know that I made another animated intro. It all works. I usually just kind of explain it as best I can or just direct you guys to Google, but I realized that when I first started doing this too, I had a lot of trouble like finding this info. I mean, there were a few pieces